joining us today right, to give his welcome message on behalf of the PSC board. Let us all welcome PSC Commissioner Ramon Fernandez. Come, magandang umaga po. Uh, magandang umaga, maayong buntag sa inyong tanan. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to this uh, webinar, a very interesting topic no? that we all should be kept abreast of. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you, all of those that joined today. I think there are close to 400 uh, uh, participants already for uh, today's session. Um, thank you for joining because uh, empowerment in all aspects of sports and its governance requires a continuing education. No? We really have to be kept abreast uh, of uh, laws and policies with regards to sports development uh, in the country. Uh, the main mandate of uh, the PSC really is to take care of uh, draw up programs for uh, grassroots development. No? So uh, after the Olympics, makinig uh, kayo, what's out, uh, there will be policies that the PSC board will be coming out with. No? Um, I would also like to suggest for all of those who are really serious in helping the Atletang Filipino no? uh, and its programs, I suggest that uh, you try to read uh, uh, Republic Act 6847 or the PSC law no? uh, so that you will know more or less the relationships of uh, the different private agencies that are uh, being uh, supported by the PSC, like uh, the POC and the NSAs, and it's working, our working relationships with them, no? So again, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. We'd like to thank uh, Attorney Al Agra for coming up with this webinar. He is uh, uh, the master of this, no? Sports for Law, siya ang nag-umpisa talaga nito. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Attorney Al, for taking your time to uh, uh, educate us all uh, with regards to, uh, uh, well, uh, laws uh, related to sports and uh, sports development. Maayong buntag ka ninyong talan. Maraming salamat po uh, to our uh, PC Commissioner Mon Fernandez. Maayong buntag po sa inyo dyan at tumitila ako po yung manok dito sa akin po. Ano. Excuse me po. And uh, thank you, uh, Kong, for that very uh, very challenging uh, and inspiring welcome message. Uh, today's webinar, uh, as mentioned, is uh, when one of the many sessions po that we will be having uh, for this Sports uh, Law for All online certificate course. And as you know, uh, as we've been uh, promoting this program and also if you've been uh, if you are one of the registrants no na nakita niyo po sa ating uh, mga social media accounts ang course po na ito will have four sessions and eight modules every Tuesday uh, starting today July 6 and it will continue on July 3 to July 13 20 and 27 so uh, matagal na po tayong magkakasama and uh, and since uh, ang webinar po na ito ay hindi lang basta-basta webinar but also an online certificate course, participants would be able to complete, uh, participants po no, who would be able to complete all ang ating sessions are entitled to receive certifications. And uh, we also mentioned that no, uh, you're, you're entitled po to receive a certificate of completion, a certificate of attendance, and a sports law for all certificate mula po sa ating resource speaker. And uh, dahil dyan, uh, let me introduce to you ang ating pong, uh, resource speaker for this afternoon. Siya po ang president of the Filipinas Obstacle Sports Federation, president of Obstacle Sports Federation Asia Pacific, and uh, also the vice, vice president of the Asia Free Running Parkour Union and president of the East Asia and Southeast Asia Free Running Parkour Union. He is the chairman of the Arbitration Committee and the member of the Constitutional Amendments Committee of the Philippine Olympic Committee. He is the Deputy Chef de Mission 
for the Philippine contingent bound for the 2021 Vietnam Southeast Asian Games. He has fub- published an infographic on sports for a purpose, and he is the author of the primer entitled Sports Law for All. Ang ating guest speaker has written about anti-gender-based harassment in sports, the role of sports in achieving the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, uh, our national athletes' employees, independent contractors, service providers, or beneficiaries of their national sports association, sports for a purpose at the local government level, uh, PPPs in sports, and the National Federation Athletes Agreement. He is a lawyer, a public servant, a law professor, a bar reviewer, and a law book author and an athlete. He is the chairman of the Governing Board of the Philippine Reclamation Authority and was the former Acting Secretary of Justice, Acting Solicitor General, and Government Corporate Counsel. He teaches and has authorized, uh, authored rather, law books and policy papers on administrative law, law government, law, go, local government law, election law, law on public officers, and law on public-private partnerships. He completes in his age group an obstacle course, racing, and javelin throwing. I'm very privileged na to introduce to you ang ating pong resource speaker for this, after, for this morning. Let us all welcome Attorney Alberto C. Agra. Attorney, magandang umaga po. Uh, <clears throat> magandang umaga, Joach. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Mon Fernandez. And maraming salamat sa Philippine Sports Commission at sa... Philippine Sports Institute for giving me this opportunity to learn with everyone. No? Uh, I do not claim to be a master of uh, sports law like you. I'm going through my own uh, continuing education on sports law. And again, because of this webinar, uh, lumalalim po at lumalawak ang aking kaalaman sa, sa sports law. And hopefully for the next four Tuesdays, Uh, lalawak din at lalalim ang inyong kaalaman tungkol sa, sa sports law. No? Uh, by the way, let me say that sports law or any field of law is not just for lawyers. No? It's not just for government officials. Uh, sports law, sports governance in order to be effective and meaningful, uh, kailangan maraming nakakaalam ng batas. Kaya uh, ito yung pinakabuod ng ating programa Uh, sports law para sa lahat. No? So let me uh, share my first uh, PowerPoint presentation for this morning. Uh, again, we will be together for the next uh, four Tuesdays. And let me just walk you through the modules that we will be covering, the four sessions that we will be covering for the next Tuesdays. For the for today and for the three more Tuesdays. Uh, today, we will be talking about the big picture, uh, about policies and about governance. And for and uh, before we break for, before we adjourn for, for today's session, uh, we will cover a discussion on national athletes. And for next Tuesday, we will talk about two other athletes, the professional athletes and student athletes. At uh, kasama sa discussion na to would be the relevant government agencies who, who, has, who have a mandate or a jurisdiction over professional sports and also for student athletes. Uh, July 20, which is uh, the third Tuesday, we will have a topic on local governance in sports. And we will also talk about partnerships in sports. And for the fourth uh, and the last uh, Tuesday, we will be talking about safe sport, diversity, and inclusivity. And we will be talking about events and spaces. So this slide tells us the, the four sessions and the two modules per session, as well as the subtopics. Uh, this course, it was carefully designed by yours truly together with the Philippine Sports Commission and the Philippine Sports Institute. Uh, so this is, I think, a first. So hopefully this first will not be the last. So at some point we might have a part two of this 
or even an online self-paced uh, course. So let me begin with uh, today's uh, session. And by the way, after, um, after this first module, we will have a five minute break. Then we will continue with module two of today's session before we have our open forum. So uh, let's talk about the big picture. Uh, let's talk about universal policies, not just in the Philippines. And we will talk about uh, governance related to sports. But first, uh, let me, let's talk about uh, sports and physical fitness, not just for elite athletes, not just for uh, young athletes, but for everybody, including myself, including para-athletes, for everybody. And that's the core of uh, the message for today's, uh, for this course would be, ang sports ay para sa, para sa lahat. So just to give everyone a context and hopefully everybody will appreciate the, everybody will be on the same page regarding sports and physical fitness. Um, this is an infographic, which uh, as part of our learning, I, I got came across this infographic. What are the benefits of investing in sports? And if you do not invest in sports, what will be the cost? So um, this may be obvious to everybody, but let me just underscore the benefits and costs so that as we go through these modules, we are on the same page as to the relevance of sports and sports law. Of course, regular physical activity reduces the risk of non-communicable diseases. And in terms of uh, cost, no, uh, Kung tayo ay malusog at tayo ay active, uh, tumataas ang investment in physical, uh, tumataas ang returns if we are all active and healthy. And of course, a uh, benefit of investing in sports will be to reduce obesity, to reduce depression, lalo na ngayong nasa crisis tayong lahat in this pandemic. And hopefully through one of the benefits of sports is to, to enhance quality physical education by developing skills and values. If you look at the costs of not investing in physical activity, the higher the risk for non-communicable diseases, uh, dumadami ang premature deaths uh, annually. Uh, mas marami pang araw, uh, namamatay dahil sa lack of physical activity kesa sa paninigarilyo. And adolescent girls are less physically active than adolescent boys. And an unhealthy society contributes to the health burden of that society. And therefore, lumalaki din ang cost on the budget for, for being inactive. Uh, Medyo nakaka, this is a wake up call, no? 81% of students worldwide from 11 to 17 do less than 60 minutes of exercise per day. No? So again, we're part of the sports community and please be mindful of, of these facts and figures. No? And let me share with you another fact. Uh, there's this study uh, which uh, rates and grades countries in terms of nasaan ba ang mga aling bansa ang merong pinakatamad or laziest teenagers. No? Uh, so ito, when I saw this infographic, I was shocked. Uh, so ang Pilipinas <clears throat> ay ranked number two. No? Uh, uh, hopefully uh, for me, uh, nakakasindak, nakakatakot itong, itong findings na to, no? And uh, we're just a few points shy of the first placer, which is South Korea. So 93.4% of our teenagers are lazy. Uh, and hopefully, makatulong in some way itong ating programa ng sports law uh, to, and hopefully, this will change. This 
has to change. And again, for uh, I don't claim to be an expert in uh, in in physical activity, but uh, in some of this in the infographics that I have uh, that I have researched on and chanced upon, uh, napakahalaga ng sports, lalo na sa ating kabataan, uh, fitness, obesity, anxiety, social skills, emotional health, relieve stress self-esteem, personal skills, uh, skills to use in life, and cognitive abilities. No? And uh, I was referring to the, the points raised in, uh, in that infographic uh, to, my, to my left. And of course, to our uh, lazy teenagers, not just I suppose the teenagers, but everybody, napakadami talaga ng benefits of exercise. And again, uh, during this pandemic, uh, the benefits of exercise, I believe, has been highlighted even during this crisis. So again, uh, the reason why I share these three slides is just for all of us to appreciate and to deepen our appreciation and understanding of why sports and physical activity are important. So for this module one, we, we have four main topics. We will define what sports law is. For those who attended uh, our conversation before on sports law, uh, we, will we will use the same set of slides, of course, enhanced slides. We will talk about the fundamental laws, uh, basically the 1987 Constitution and the UN Declaration of Human Rights. We will talk about peace and development, and more importantly, in order to achieve all of this, we will talk about sports governance. So, but before anything else, uh, and this will, this will be our protocol for all our modules, we will have a quizzer or self-test. Of course, this will not be, be graded, but I encourage everyone to, to, uh, to answer uh, using the the icons in, in, in this Zoom platform, uh, check mark for yes and uh, X mark for no. So again, uh, hopefully after realizing the true answers, lalong uh, lalalim ang ating kaalaman about sports law. So let me begin with number one. Uh, sports is only about physical fitness. Yes or no? or true or false. Uh, so please uh, use your icons. And again, uh, so I'd like to think that everybody got this correctly. Uh, sports is not just about physical fitness. So the answer here is no. It's about social fitness, emotional fitness, psychological fitness. So napakahalaga po ng sports, not just for our physique, or physical well-being. So that's number one. Number two, sports law involves only one aspect of legislation. So uh, please uh, click your icons. Is this a yes or a no? And as I will explain and amplify later, the answer to this statement is it's a no, it's false. Uh, Ang ating sports law, as you will appreciate, kaya naman we dedicated, we will dedicate four Tuesdays for this. Napakalawak po at napakalalib ng sports law. It affects uh, a lot of aspects of laws and policies. So number two, the answer is no or false. And again, please type in your answers. I mean, click in your answers. Third, Item would be sports law is confined to rules on fields of play. When we talk about fields of play, for basketball, it's the basketball court. For volleyball, for the volleyball court. For track and field, it would be that stadium. So ang sports law ba ay, uh, ay tungkol lamang sa mga paman tayan mga batas tungkol sa fields of play and sports law is a very broad covers a very broad spectrum it covers our daily lives 
kaya uh, kaya uh, kaya ang tamang sagot dito sa statement number three it's an X or a no and we will explain this as we go through our online certificate course number four sports under the constitution the purpose of sports under the constitution is for an individual is for self interest so ang tanong nga dito merong bang noble purpose or malalim na purpose ang sports under our constitution so sports under the constitution is for self interest again type in your answers click in your answers the answer is an x the answer is no may malalim na layunin ang sports and i will share that with you uh, as part of our lecture this morning Number five, human rights ba ang sports for all? Ang topic natin today and uh, the next four, next three Tuesdays. Human rights ba ang sports for all or hindi? The answer, yes. The answer is, it is. And therefore, ang tamang sagot dito, sports for all is not a human right. The answer is X because it is a human right. The Philippine Sports Commission is the only administrative agency in government which has a mandate on sports. No? Uh, is this true or false? Yes or no? The answer is, the statement is false. There are other sports agencies. There are other agencies in government na may kinalaman sa sports. And later on, I will show you a matrix of these agencies discussing and describing their respective mandates. So the answer to number six is an X or no. Number seven, sports governance is not decentralized. Or if you were to uh, restate this, sports governance is centralized. So, ang tanong dito ay ang sports governance ba ay only at the national level or even at the local government level? As I will explain to you shortly and for all of and for some of us which belong to local government units and even for state universities and colleges, maliwanag na lahat po sila ay may mandate sa sports governance. And therefore, the answer to this question, this statement, is false or a no or an X. So if you uh, recount all your answers to these uh, seven items, the answer to these seven items would be all no or in the negative. What is sport? Uh, I've searched through all the laws, rules, and Supreme Court decisions in the Philippines, and I have not encountered a policy, a stated policy defining sport. No, and maybe some of you uh, uh, have, have you. Maybe you can help me do that search. No, uh, to disprove the fact that sports is not defined un under our current laws. But here's a definition which I feel is relevant because I'm a firm believer that sport is broad in terms of its breadth. So it talks about all forms of physical activity, not just physical fitness, but also mental and social. Hindi lang siya yung competitive, pero it also includes recreation, organized or not organized, casual or competitive, and even indigenous sports or games. At the local level, uh, this is one of my primers. Uh, I'm promoting and advancing the adoption of a sports for all ordinance in our local government units. My own definition is it is an activity involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team becomes better, develops, competes against another and or interacts with others. Actually, uh, I, I crafted this definition prior to uh, getting this definition from future learn so i feel even my definition is is does not cover everything what sports should cover 
So again, hopefully everybody attending this webinar uh, will have a broader, deeper appreciation of what sports is. So what is sports law? We have already defined what sports is. Now we are going to define what sports law is. So it talks about all policies, laws, regulations, decisions pertaining to sports and athletes or physical activity. So it is not just about one aspect of law, but it's a mix or a hybrid or an amalgam of laws. So it is not just a single legal topic. Uh, the next slide, I will enumerate what these topics are. So sports law, according to this material, is a specialized practice. It talks about an industry. It talks about a particular industry. Right now, we have entertainment industry, arts, hospitality law. So ito yung some people call this boutique laws. So sports law is a in the Philippines, not that mature, but hopefully through this uh, webinar, uh, lalong lumalim ang sports law sa ating bansa. The purpose of sports law, and again, if you recall one of our statements that sports law only pertains to the field of play, here it talks about safety, equality, fairness, and integrity on and off the playing field. And again, ulitin ko lang po, no? Safety, equality, fairness, and integrity. Kaya pag-uusapan natin sa course na to, ang human rights, pag-uusapan natin sa session number seven, safe sport, no? pag-uusapan natin ng equality. No, napakahalagang konsepto sa sports. Uh, sabi ko nga, ang sports ay hindi lang pang sports. No? And what are the aspects of a sports law? It tells us about the constitution, contracts, agency, torts, crimes, labor, trademark, tax, antitrust, and discrimination. Uh, isang interesting discussion later in module 2 would be for our national athletes, sila ba ay empleyado ng National Sports Association? We will have a discussion on that in module 2. Let's now examine our Philippine Constitution, uh, our fundamental and basic law. It talks about right to health, no? hindi privilege to health. It's a right of everybody, no? health consciousness. Earlier, I, in one of the statements, if you recall, is sports in the constitution for self-interest? The answer is no, not just para sa sarili natin. Sports to foster patriotism, nationalism, social progress, and total human liberation and development. So again, napakalalim ng layunin ng sports law. And this is also reflected in Article 14 of the Constitution. And we have a specific section on sports in the 1987 Constitution, which has two um, sections, physical education, Encourage sports program, amateur sports, international competitions. For what? What is the purpose again? Self-discipline, teamwork, excellence, and healthy and alert citizenry. So really sports has a sports purpose. Uh, no? Sabi nga nila, social change is a team sport. No? So hopefully, itong komunidad na to at ang komunidad na nililikom ng Philippine Sports Commission will be part of that movement. At again, uh, ang mahalaga dito sa section 2 of, uh, sorry, paragraph 2 of section 19, yung partnership. Mahalaga ang collaboration between government and the private sector, private sector and private sector, government and government. No? That will be, actually, we will cover that in module uh, 6 of our 8-module course talking about partnerships. And there are other uh, provisions of our constitution which are relevant to sports, which are actually relevant to everybody. Social order, social justice, dignity, civic efficiency, nation building, well-being, patriotism again, and nationalism again, equality in sports no? uh, for women, for LGBTQ+, no? 
safe environment, healthy environment, mahalaga din to for sports, participation of non-governmental organizations, vital role in communication, and dahil ang sports governance in the Philippines is decentralized, napakahalaga po ng role of local governments. So ito po ang basic law when we talk about uh, the Philippines. But the Philippines adopted also the UN Declaration of Human Rights. And sports is very relevant when we talk about human rights. Free and equal, no discrimination, no distinction, right to life. Lahat tayo ay pantay-pantay kahit sa larangan ng sports. Karapatan din natin ang effective remedy, due process, freedom of expression, freedom of thought, freedom of opinion, and lastly, peaceful assembly and association. So when we form uh, a national sports association, when we form student leagues, no? bahagi ito ng peaceful assembly and association. Pag tayo ay nagsusumbong dahil merong paglabag ng safe sport policies, no? bahagi ito ng freedom of opinion and expression. No? Kung tayo ay hindi pantay-pantay ang pagtingin natin sa kalalakihan at kababaihan, no? nagbibigay tayo ng mas maraming binipisyo sa kalalakihan at hindi sa kababaihan. Therefore, it violates uh, human rights. It violates uh, the 1987 Constitution. So napakahalaga po that we all appreciate in this bigger picture uh, module about sports for all being a fundamental human right. And just to share uh, moving forward no, uh, from a very lazy uh, country, no, uh, merong global action plan na up to 2030, uh, nine years from now. No? The vision of the United Nations is to have more active people for a healthier world. No? Ang specific target uh, by 2030, the target for the action plan is 15% relative reduction in the global prevalence of physical inactivity in adults and in adolescents. No? So these are the guiding principles for that would be human rights approach. And we've shared with you the UNE, uh, UN Declaration of Human Rights, equity, uh, coherence in policies and plans. And again, that's a reason why this course is very important. Partnerships, engagement, evidence-based, and proportional universality. So again, mahalaga po ito lahat dahil bahagi tayo ng global sports community. And again, in our respective communities, in our respective schools and organizations, maganda rin meron tayong target uh, how to reduce what will be the target percentage reduction and how to reduce uh, physical inactivity. And I'd like to think that everybody's familiar with the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, if you look at the infographics here, uh, itong infographic nito by the United Nations is actually geared towards or focused towards sports. All of the male and female, able-bodied and para-athletes shown in this infographic are, are clearly uh, contribute to the achievement of sustainable development goals. So... If you notice, all these 17 sustainable development goals can be achieved through sports. Let me underscore the five uh, sustainable development goals. Can sports achieve no poverty? Can sports be a vehicle for zero hunger? Can sports promote good health and well-being? Can sports promote quality education? And can sports be a vehicle to counter gender inequality? So the answer is yes. And let me share with you in, uh, in my second primer on sports law for all, here are just examples of how I believe uh, 
the five sustainable development goals can be achieved. And again, is this part of sports law? Yes, because part of sports law is sports law, sports for all, because it is a human right. And again, which is enshrined in our 1987 constitution. So here are just our, my own examples of, uh, of plans and projects, how to achieve the five sustainable development goals. Uh, no poverty, uh, develop sports programs, magkaroon ng sports infrastructure, break down all barriers na kung saan discriminatory ang sports, uh, uh, provide for sports equipment. So those are some examples of uh, how to achieve no poverty. Zero hunger, let's connect sports with livelihood. Uh, maybe percentage of some of the event proceeds will go to undeserved, underserved communities, nutrition, maybe we can form cooperatives and maybe organic food or healthy food for athletes and everybody else. Good health and well-being, diversify sports, promote sports for all, uh, sports events for all, organize events for all, safeguard athletes again and, and against any and all forms of discrimination, abuse, bullying. No? Magkaroon ng maliwanag na safe, safety protocols. No? So those are some examples of uh, the, the, the how-tos of uh, good health and well-being. Uh, quality education. Um, again, formal and informal sector investments in, in physical education. Napakahalaga po nito. And gender equality, that's the fifth, uh, that's number five of the 17 sustainable development goals. Safe space, we have a law on safe space. We will discuss safe spaces and safe sport in module seven of our course. No? Set up mixed team competitions, denounce all forms of gender exploitation and equalize prize money, no? let's say for professional sports, pareho sana ang prize money for male and female. So again, this is my own list of how to's to achieve the five sustainable development goals. And here's my own take of uh, no? uh, during in, in, in our sports conversation and sports law, uh, I also showed this to, to the audience. So let me just, let's just go through this, uh, this infographic. No? Um, success is not just standing on the podium, no? not just winning in the games. No? Uh, well, winning in the games is important, but I think winning in life is more important. No? Getting the gold medal is important, but what is more important for everybody will be to achieve the 17 sustainable development goals. Legacy would be not just for oneself, but for the family and the community. Uh, mahalaga yung journey, and every journey uh, is a learning experience. Uh, I've coined this term once upon a time, it was Olympicimist, but I have simplified the term to, Olymp to uh, Olympist. I invite everybody to become Olympists. And for us, for me, the core meaning of Olympism is building better humans. For leadership, whether in government or in the private sector, in schools, and in our respective organizations, uh, hopefully wag lang specific transactions, but for all of us to be servant leaders, even in sports. Uh, sports for all, no? not just for elite winners. Uh, the purpose of sports is not just for sports, but for happiness and better quality of life beyond the field of play and even outside. And lastly, uh, while competition is important, uh, more important would be better quality of life and being life-centered. So this is an infographic, which for me encapsulates what sports for all, for a purpose, actually means. And now the last topic for this first module will be governance in sports. Let me underscore the fact 
that in sports governance in the Philippines, it is decentralized. And there are two levels of decentralization, horizontal and vertical. When we talk about horizontal at the national level and even at the local level, no, it's being promoted. So at the horizontal level, at the national level, we have the Philippine Sports Commission, we have the Games and Amusement Board, we have the Department of Education, and we have the Commission on Higher Education. For vertical decentralization and horizontal decentralization at the grassroots or lower level, we have, of course, our barangays, our municipalities, our cities, and our provinces. And we now have the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim, Muslim Mindanao. And another way by which sports governance is captured at the, at the, at the lower level or at, at everywhere level would be our state universities and, and colleges. So, so here are the government agencies which are involved in sports. No? If you recall one of our statements in the true or false, uh, I asked whether the PSC is the only agency in government involved in sports. The answer is no. While the, lahat po ito may kanya-kanyang mandato. Lahat po ng mga ahensyang ito ay may kanya-kanyang function. Lahat ng ito ay may kanya-kanyang what we call charters or the law which actually created them. Okay? To better appreciate the mandate and the functions of these agencies, I have prepared this infographic. Okay? Sige, I'll, I'll give you time to go over this, then we will discuss this. By the way, uh, uh, after the, the two modules for today, I will be sharing the PowerPoint presentation uh, in PDF format. This will be uploaded in our Google platform being managed by the Philippine Sports Commission and the uh, Philippine Sports Institute. By the way, uh, up, to choose, up to yesterday, and we, which we started last week, uh, yung mga reference materials for modules one and two were uploaded in this platform. For the reference materials for modules three and four for our session uh, next week, we will upload the materials beginning uh, tomorrow. But for the PowerPoint presentation for module one and module two, we will share that this afternoon. So let's talk about the agencies involved in sports. Philippine Sports Commission, Games and Amusement Board, Pertaining to education, we have DepEd and CHED. And at the local government level, we have local government units. Okay, let's talk about their enabling law. No? Who created them? No? If you look at these five uh, agencies, uh, PSC, DepEd, CHED, and LGUs, these were all created by law. But for the Games and Amusement Board, as, as in 1948, it is through an executive order. No? So lahat po ito are all uh, de jure or legitimate entities. Philippine Sports Commission, under the, its charter, it's a governmental, regulatory, national agency with corporate powers. No? For GAB, it is a regulatory and supervisory agency. DepEd, like the Department of Justice, the Department of Public Works and Highways, it is a national government agency. For CHED, it is an administrative agency which is independent of DepEd. And lastly, at the local government level, barangay, cities, municipalities, provinces, and the autonomous region, these are political and territorial subdivisions with governmental and proprietary uh, powers. All of these agencies, uh, meron siyang relationship with the president. For PSC and for CHED, these are attached to the office of the president. For GAB, it is under the office of the president. For the Department of Education, it is under the control of the president. 
But for local government units, they are under the supervision of the office of the president. So ibat ibang levels of uh, relationship with the president. I mean, just to give a, a short discussion on this relationship, when we talk about control, the one who controls can change the decisions of the one being controlled. Where the decision in this case, let's say of DepEd, is right or wrong. No? So yun yung concept of yung alter ego. So the DepEd secretary or the DepEd department is under the control of the president. When we talk about attachment, no, uh, this uh, the appoint the members of let's say here the commission, the Philippine Sports Commission and the Commission on Higher Education, these are appointees by the by the president, and under the the rule, the general rule on attachment, uh, the president cannot change the decisions of the of the of of uh, decisions of the commission. When we talk about supervision, uh, the supervisor, here in the case of the president, can only check whether the supervised, in this case, the local government units, are performing the functions uh, given to them by law. In the case of supervision, the one, the supervisor, cannot change the decisions of the supervised. So napakahalaga ding maunawaan natin when we look at this infographic would be ano ba ang primary mandate of these five agencies? Philippine Sports Commission, Amateur Sports, and of course, Sports for All. GAB, Professional Sports, and there are 21 listed sports sa mandate ng Games and Amusement Board. When we talk about the DepEd, talks about basic education, quality education for the public sector. For CHED naman, it talks about higher education, tertiary education, not just for public institutions, but also for private institutions. And for local government units, uh, they talk about local governance and they're both local governments are agents of the people and agents of the state. Ano naman ang mga functions of these agencies for the Philippine Sports Commission as uh, highlighted in one of the videos uh, and which was enunciated by Chairman Ramirez, ang main mandate of Philippine Sports Commission is to encourage and sustain development of sports and nationwide. By the way, by the way this was also underscored by Commissioner Mon Fernandez in his welcome remarks. Where do we find, again, these functions? <clears throat> we find it in RA 6847 or the Charter or the Enabling Law of the Philippine Sports Commission. If you, look, if you examine RA 6847, it tells us na ang mandate ng Philippine Sports Commission ay to support national athletes to maintain linkages. And one such linkage, with, which I like to highlight, would be the linkage between the Philippine Sports Commission and the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Paralympic Committee or PhilSpada. Uh, uh, for me, the core uh, relationship the Philippine Sports Commission with others involved in sports. Help enable Olympic Games, establish sports facilities. Uh, a month ago, uh, the pro provincial government of Bataan will has donated a piece of land kung saan itatayo ang sports complex. Provide incentives, and we will discuss this in module two, and encourage local and school events. So again, the main mandate of the Philippine Sports Commission would be amateur sports and sports for all. Now for the Games and Amusement Board, by the way, we will, we will be discussing professional sports and professional athletes next week in module 3 ang responsibility ang mandate ng games and amusement board to enforce laws and regulations to promote fairness in the conduct of games no malakas ang mandate ng games and amusement board against illegal betting grants licenses to professional sports practitioners issues permits for games and adjudicates on violations so we will discuss this in greater detail next week also next week, 
we will be discussing the mandate DepEd and CHED. But just to give you an overview, ang DepEd has uh, under the law adopted yung K to 12 pursue sports and physical fitness and include this in the basic education curriculum, schools as the most important vehicle for learning, and in terms of events, maliwanag po ang mandate ng DepEd to undertake the Palarong Pambansa. For the Commission on Higher Education, set minimum standards, rationalize programs, and review charters. And uh, one such program which should be rationalized would be physical fitness and sports. For local governments, napakalawak ng kanilang uh, jurisdiction and powers within their respective territories to promote the general welfare. Sports is part of the general welfare. Exercise devolved powers, including the establishment of sports centers, hold local sports events, a portion, a portion of the special education fund for sports, enact ordinances, hopefully, but a lot of local government units will be adopting the sports for a purpose ordinance. And lastly, levy local taxes. By the way, uh, as I was preparing this infographic, maybe there are local governments represented here that can suggest to their local councils, legislative councils, maybe the local government units can adopt a sports for all tax. No. Uh, by the way, that will be innovative and legal uh, because under the local government code, we do not have a finite or exclusive list of taxes. So to my mind, uh, this particular tax, no, sports law, sports for all tax, is a tax not being levied by any other government entity it will definitely serve a bigger and noble purpose and it is not prohibited. So for me, no, that could be a possible advocacy at the local government level no, para we need more funds to support our sports program, our sports for all program, even at the local government level. So again, um, let in order for us to achieve the purpose of sports, which is patriotism and nationalism, we must be mindful of the agencies in government which have, uh, which under their charters, under their respective charters, they would have their clear mandate and specific functions in order to promote sports and sports law for all and sports for a purpose. So uh, this ends uh, module one of, uh, of our session one for this morning's uh, session. So I will now turn you over to our moderator facilitator. For module two, we will be talking about national athletes. For module three, which is next week, we will be talking about professional athletes. And for module four, also next week, we will be talking about um, uh, student athletes. Okay, so national athletes. And of course, the games by which, where they play. Uh, that will be part of our uh, discussion um, this morning. So uh, again, please ready your... Uh, yourselves to answer these uh, self-test questions. Yes, again, for uh, check for yes or true and uh, X for no or false. Uh, these questions will not be as easy as the first uh, in mod the first set of statements in module one. A and by the way, before anything else, let me say, that some of the answers to these statements are my own views, which may not necessarily be the view of other sports law practitioner. So let's begin. A national athlete can refuse to get vaccinated under the program of the NSA. 
So, uh, up, oh, sorry. So let me just uh, stop sharing and uh, apologies. So again, uh, statement number one, ang isa bang national athlete na pupunta sa Tokyo Games or sa Southeast Asian Games, pwede ba niyang sabihin, ayoko magpa-vaccinate? Uh, under the program of the NSA. Uh, here, let me qualify this statement. No? Uh, here, I said, programa ng NSA. Kasi what if programa siya ng gobyerno? What if requirement siya by the games itself? By the way, for the Tokyo Games, from my recollection, it is not required. It is highly encouraged. So, uh, so my, your answer to number one, uh, pwede bang mag-refuse? It is my belief, and again, here I'm stating my personal opinion, that ang atleta may right to consent if it's a program of that NSA. And therefore, it is my personal view that a national athlete of an NSA cannot be forced, cannot be penalized, cannot be sanctioned for not getting vaccinated. So that is my own view. Okay, and I will explain that as we go through our module. Second statement. A national athlete is an employee of an NSA. Uh, so just to go through all the options, which again, we will discuss shortly. Ang national athlete ba empleyado? or independent contractor, or service provider, or beneficiary ng, inang, ng isang national sports association. And let me give you my answer. And again, this is my own answer, which I've shared in two of my primers. It is my position, and again, this is Al Agra talking, that a national athlete is not an employee of a national sports association. To my mind, a national athlete is a beneficiary of a national sports association. By the way, iba ang discussion natin pagdating sa professional sports. At iba ang magiging discussion natin for student athlete. But for now, let's talk about national athletes. Most NSAs have written contracts with their national athletes. By the way, for us in the Pilipinas Obstacle Sports Federation, we formed our national teams uh, last week and all our national athletes signed uh, their respective athletes agreement. So number three, from what I know, uh, hindi yata ganun karami ang mga NSAs ang merong, kanilang, ang merong mga kontrata or kasunduan with their national athletes. For me, it is high time that NSAs and national athletes have their own agreements. Because why? For me, the purpose of having an agreement is to clarify, to outline, to delineate what are the rights and responsibilities of the NSA and what are the rights and responsibilities of a national athlete. And again, in one of my primers, I came out with a sample or draft or template an agreement of a national athlete. Number four is safe sport. Safe sport is an athlete's right. Yes or no? The answer is, uh, as we have discussed in module one, uh, this is a human right. Therefore, it is an athlete's right. So the answer to number four is check. By the way, for one, my answer is uh, check. Number two, my answer is X. And number three, my answer is X. Again, those are my answers. Number five, a national athlete can get sponsors 
different from the NSA sponsors? So uh, type in your, click in your answers. Can they get or are they, or they cannot get their own sponsors? My answer to this question is yes, they can get. This is part of their right to consent. It is my position that a national athlete of an NSA cannot even be forced to be a sponsor of a sponsor of an NSA. So again, this is my own position. And again, in my template uh, athletes agreement, this is uh, enshrined in that athletes agreement. Number six, there can be more than one national Olympic committee and more than one national Paralympic committee in a country, uh, which is affiliated with the International Olympic Committee and the International Paralympic Committee. The answer is X, because only one NOC and only one NPC can exist or can be recognized by the IOC and the IPC respectively. Number seven, the POC is involved in professional sports. Uh, and again, the answer here is, uh, uh, sorry, POC is involved in professional sports. The answer is X, because POC is only involved in amateur sports. So the answer is X for number seven. Number eight, the Philippine Olympic Committee is recognized in Philippine law. Therefore, the Philippine Olympic Committee is a government-owned and controlled corporation. No? Uh, if you look at the statement, uh, you can break it up into two parts. The first one is, is POC recognized in Philippine law? Check or X? The answer is check. The Philippine Olympic Committee, even if it is a private entity, is recognized in two laws here in the country. So that portion is check. But is it correct to say that the Philippine Olympic Committee, because it is recognized by Philippine law, does it make it a government-owned and controlled corporation? To my mind, the answer is no. The, the Philippine Olympic Committee remains to be a private entity, although there is, some, there is a formal recognition by our Philippine Congress. So the Philippine Olympic Committee is not owned. The Philippine Olympic Committee is not controlled by the Philippine government, but it is recognized under Philippine law. Nine, the Philippine Sports Commission can change the rules of a sport? No. The answer is check or X? The answer is X. The Philippine Sports Commission and even the Philippine Olympic Committee and even the, the Philippine Paralympic Committee have no authority to change the rules of the sport because the rules of the sport is prescribed by the international federations which, and therefore, which is respected by the national sports associations, which must be followed by the NSAs and must also be followed by government agencies. And the last statement for our quizzer number two would be in terms of cash incentives, able-bodied athletes and para-athletes are entitled to the same benefits. Sige nga po, uh, what would be your answer to this? Is it check or is it X? Okay, let me, let's pause a bit. Under the law, pareho ba pag nag uh, gold medal ang isang atleta sa Tokyo Games by the IOC at mag gold medal ang isang atleta sa Paralympic Games also in Tokyo, pareho ba ang makukuha nilang binipisyo? So pantay-pantay ba ang pagtingin sa able-bodied athletes and para-athletes? 
Let me explain my answer to number 10. In terms of benefits, they are the same. But in terms of the amount, they are not the same. If you look at our family law, for legitimate children and illegitimate children, illegitimate children get, gets only, get only half. So just to illustrate that for able-bodied athletes, they will get the full amount. But under our current laws, our para-athletes will only get half of what able-bodied athletes are getting. There are attempts to change this law so that our laws will be truly equal between able-bodied and para-athletes. So hopefully this law will be amended so that it will be truly compliant with our constitution and with, our, with the Declaration of Human Rights. So again, uh, every module gets uh, more interesting than the previous uh, modules. So our topics for uh, before we adjourn this lunch time would be what are the competitions, what would be the international organizations and uh, how are they represented in the Philippines, what are the classes and status of athletes, and lastly, what are the rights and responsibilities of national athletes. And again, next week, we will be talking about the rights and responsibilities of professional athletes and student athletes. So again, national athletes, we must context situate them in so far as the games, the competitions. So we have Olympics and Paralympic games. We have events by our international federations and national sports associations or national federations. And next week, we will be discussing professional leagues and school leagues we also have leagues and competitions by local government units and by private entities. The Olympic movement, what is yung ating international governing body for the Olympic movement would be the International Olympic Committee. If you look at the purpose of the Olympic movement, the objective of Olympism, would be, it is not just about organizing the games. It's much, much more than organizing the games. It is for a peaceful and better world. And what are the pillars of the Olympic movement? There are three pillars. The International Olympic Committee, the International Sports Federations, and the National Olympic Committees. In the Philippines, it is the Philippine Olympic Committee. And what is the vision of the IOC, which must be followed by the NSAs and must be followed by the Philippine Olympic Committee, ethics and good governance, promotion and, and, uh, and the conduct of sports competitions, regular celebration, which is for every four years, the Olympic Games, enter into partnerships. Again, we will discuss this uh, third Tuesday from today partnerships with public and private organizations, maintain the independence of these pillars, fight against uh, any form of discrimination, have athletes represented in governing bodies, promotion of women in sports, having clean and clean athletes and promote, protect the integrity of sport. We will cover this in module seven, medical care, protection against political or commercial abuse, social and professional future of athletes, sports for all, which we discussed uh, in module one, environmental issues and a healthy ecology, having a positive legacy, culture edu and education and safe sport. So here, if you look at the, the, the mission and the role of the IOC, it is consistent with the UN Declaration of Human Rights. If you look at the charter of the IOC, in fact, it cites as one of its uh, basis would be the UN Declaration of Human Rights. Now, let's go to the Philippines. The Philippine Olympic Committee. As I earlier mentioned, the Philippine Olympic Committee is recognized by two 
Philippine laws. Republic Acts 10699 and 6847. The Philippine Olympic Committee is the only National Olympic Committee recognized by the International Olympic Committee. It is a non-stock, non-profit uh, corporation registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Like all NOCs, the POC must develop, promote, and protect the Olympic movement. What is its primary responsibility, but not, but not its only responsibility, would be to conduct and participate in international athletic competitions, Olympic Games, Asian Games, Southeast Asian Games, and others. And our Philippine Olympic Committee under RA 10699 recognizes national athletes and coaches, while our Philippine Sports Commission supports these national athletes and coaches. So uh, to your left would be what are the functions and mandate of the POC under relevant laws and policies. To your right would be what are the basic functions of the Philippine Olympic Committee under, the, under its Articles of Incorporation and Bylaws, or AIBL. Promote not just high-performance sports, but sport for all. Prepare and select athletes. It is the sole authority for the representation of the, of the Philippines in international games. And it must only recognize one NSA for a given sport. So again, this is the function of the POC under our existing laws and under its own charter. The second pillar would be international federations. We have international federations for all the sports. And an IF may govern one or several sports. Olympics, it promotes the Olympic spirit, development of the sport worldwide, but for the Olympic Committee, it must develop the sport in the Philippines. It must pursue the Olympic Charter and the Olympic movement, help in the candidatures for the Olympic Games, participate in the Olympic Games, provide technical assistance, medical care, and formulate proposals, and basically support the International Olympic Committee if it is so recognized by the International Olympic Committee. And the other pillar of, uh, of the Olympic movement would be the national federations. By the way, under the Philippine, in the Philippine Olympic Committee, there are three layers or levels or types of national sports associations or national federations. We have the regular member, there are the voting members, and there are two different types of regular members, those which are part of the Olympic Games and those which are not. We have associate members and we have recognized members. Under, its, uh, it, under the bylaws of the Philippine Olympic Committee, a national sports association is the national governing body of that particular sport. It must promote the sport, not just in a particular locality, but nationwide. And uh, it selects the athletes, trainers, and coaches uh, that will form part of the national teams for that particular sport. A national sports association is also defined and described in a law, which is the Charter of the Philippine Sports Commission. Under, the, under RA 6847 and under the implementing rules of RA 6847, an NSA is either of two things. It is organized for a sport in the Philippines and or it is recognized by the International Olympic Committee. An NSA is autonomous. It is independent. It cannot be interfered with. And it has exclusive technical control over a particular sport. And therefore, as I mentioned earlier, the Philippine Sports Commission and the Philippine Olympic Committee and the, cannot interfere with the rules of a particular sport because the rules of an NSA uh, for that particular sport follows the rules of the International Federation. An NSA must have its own constitution and bylaws. It must conduct competitions. 
it must select the athletes, coaches, and other officials for the national team. And in coordination with the Philippine Olympic Committee, under this law, uh, NSAs must develop their training program. Let's now go to the International Paralympic Committee. Its charter tells us that it is involved in para sports to have a more inclusive society for our athletes with disabilities, whether it's visual, whether it's hearing, whether it's intellectual, without unlawful discrimination, political, religious, economic, disability, racial, gender, or sexual, they must, IPC's mandate is to promote Paralympics and para, -athlete, para athletes for all, all throughout the world. And like the IOC, it must also encourage and promote relations. For membership, uh, like the Philippine Olympic Committee, for our IPC, we only have one National Paralympic Committee in the country recognized by the International Paralympic Committee. And its name is the Philippine Sports Association for the Differently Abled or Phil Spada. Phil Spada, if you look at uh, its purpose number one, serves as the NSA or National Federation or National Paralympic Committee for all persons with disabilities uh, pursuant to our Philippine laws. Let's not talk about the athletes, uh, but for today's module, we will focus, focus on national athletes. But there are other types of athletes, student athletes, professional athletes, recreational athletes, and club athletes. In terms of the sector, they can be either able-bodied or para-athletes, youth and kids, seniors or masters, and whether women or LGBTQ+. So, and again, there should be no discrimination when we talk about the rights of these athletes. Let us, okay. but before we focus on the rights, uh, earlier I mentioned, if you recall, I think it's statement number two in our quizzer, an NSA is an employee, sorry, in the statement is a national athlete is an employee of an NSA. What was my answer? And again, this is my answer and you might have your own answer. For me, a national athlete is a beneficiary. A national athlete is not an employee, is not an independent contractor, is not a service provider of the NSA. Why is that my position? Because compared to other athletes, compared to a student athlete, compared to a professional athlete, compared to a club athlete, our national athletes, they do not just represent their respective NSAs, but they represent the country in these international competitions. They represent the flag. They do not represent a particular brand. They do not represent a particular local government unit. They do not represent a particular school. They represent the whole country. They will bear the flag. They will bring glory. They are heroes of our country. And that's the reason why it is my position that national athletes are beneficiaries. So our NSAs serve the interests of these beneficiaries, not the other way around. But for an employee, an employee serves the interest of the employer. The employee is under the control of the employer in terms of the means and the ends of how work must be performed. And how do we differentiate an employee from an independent contractor? Let me just jump to the next slide. An employee, an employer has control over the means and the ends. But for an independent contractor, the one engaging the services of an independent contractor has control over the ends but an independent contractor has independence 
in terms of the manner by which the ends will be accomplished. So again, uh, the reason why I wanted to, to give this, th these two slides, to share these two slides, because to help us make a determination whether national athletes, what will be their status and their relationship in so far as their national sports associations are concerned. Again, this is my view uh, that national athletes are beneficiaries. They are not employees, independent contractors, service providers of their NSAs. Why is that important? Because if a national athlete is a beneficiary, not an employee or an independent contractor, then our labor laws will not apply. Okay. Because what will be the governing law that will, be, that will govern a national sports association and a national athlete that will be governed by their contract or by civil laws? And that's the reason why I encourage, I'm strongly advocating that all NSAs in the Philippines and in all countries must have their own athletes agreement with their athletes so that the rights and responsibilities, the meets and bounds of each party should be clearly defined. And again, let me just underscore the fact that national athletes being beneficiaries are the bosses. Their interests must be served by the NSAs, not the other way around. So that's the reason why the concept of beneficiary is important. And national athlete is also defined under uh, RA 10699. And national athletes include athletes with disabilities and able-bodied athletes. Filipino, recognized by the Philippine Sports Commission, accredited by the Philippine Olympic Committee, and for purposes of getting cash incentives from the PSC, they must have participated and represented in international sports competition. What is the meaning of an international sports competition? We have these four types of international competitions. We have regular major competitions such as the Olympics and Southeast Asian Games. We have world level competitions, which must be held every two years and the number of countries must be at least 45. Asian level held also biennial and at least 25 countries and qualifying events for these international events with at least 10 countries. Okay. Why is this important? Why is it important to determine whether it is regular major, world level, Asian level, or a qualifying competition? Because as I will explain, Shortly, the level of competition will, will determine their benefits under RA10699. To the athletes here, to the coaches here, to the heads of organization, this is very important to know what are the rights of our athletes. To your left are the rights of athletes which are enshrined which are listed by the International Olympic Committee. And to your right are the list of rights by the World Players Union. No to discrimination, fair and clean environment, access to information, education, revenues and income, gender representation, mental and physical health, athletes representation, the right to report, the right to privacy, the freedom of expression, and the right to due process. If you recall, these are the same rights which must be, which are stated in our Philippine constitution. These are the same rights which are outlined in the UN Declaration of Human Rights, which the Philippines must follow. If you look at the list of rights and articles under the World Players Union, one thing that you will notice is these rights 
are even rights after one has after one has quote unquote retired from a particular elite sport. Here it tells us that there are rights beyond uh, competitive play, right to education, right to privacy, right to protection of name, rights of the child, right to work, right to collectively bargain. Again, all these rights are rights which must be observed even while you're still active and even after you're no longer active. And by the way, let me underscore Article 17. You must also, one of your duties, which is not just, which is not a right, would be the, the duty to respect the rights of others. It's not just about you. It's about the society. It's about other athletes, including coaches and other trainers and other officials. So again, please be mindful of the rights of athletes. In my template, uh, athletes, athletes agreement, and again, uh, for us in the Philippines Obstacle Sports Federation, we've already signed uh, the agreement between the Federation and between our, the members of our national team. Uh, their own athletes agreement. So let me just answer these 20 questions. And again, for, for the national athletes attending this webinar and for the NSAs attending this webinar and just for general information of everybody. So number one, are athletes employees? My answer is no. They are not employees. They are beneficiaries. Number two, can an athlete be, athlete be compelled by the NSA to be vaccinated? against COVID? My answer is no. It is a right. But my own personal take is I strongly encourage our athletes to get vaccinated, but they cannot be punished. They cannot be penalized for not getting vaccinated in so far as that NSA is concerned. What is the purpose of this athlete's agreement? Of course, to define the rights and responsibilities of the athlete and the National Federation. What are the international declarations? We have the Constitution, we have the UN Declaration of Human Rights, we have the rights under the Athlete 365 of the International Olympic Committee, and we have the rights enumerated by the World's uh, Union. Who is an athlete? Uh, again, that's defined also by our laws, but for us in the Federation, they must be eligible and they must have they are qualified, and when we say qualified, they must have gone through uh, qualifying events and races so that there's some objectivity in the selection of the members of the national team. Number six, an interesting question. Can an athlete leave the NSA? The answer is yes. But under my template agreement, an athlete cannot leave the NSA three months before an international competition. So that's the qualifier in this number six. Can an NSA remove an athlete? The answer is yes. Of course, there are certain grounds. Let's say violation of the agreement and there must and the athlete, athlete must be accorded due process. Must an athlete, must an NSA adopt a safe sport policy? Yes. Again, safe sport is a human right. No to discrimination, no to violence, no to abuse, no to, to uh, bullying. What are the resources an NSA must provide the athlete? Again, this is contractual. This will be dependent on the policy, program, and resources of an NSA. What is the training plan? It must be a, there must be a team training plan, and there must be an individual training plan, and the athlete must be consulted in so far as that plan is concerned. And by the way, can an athlete refuse uh, a particular training regimen? Can an athlete refuse, uh, let's say the supplements being given by, by the National Sports Association? The answer for me is yes. This is part of the right to consent, to consent. Can an athlete obtain sponsorships from other sponsors which are not the sponsors of the NSA? Uh, my answer earlier is yes. How do we resolve disputes? Of course, conciliation and at some point arbitration. 
Can an athlete join another organization? Uh, if, can an athlete compete in another sport under disagreement? The answer is yes. But can they join another organization which is uh, the same sport as your NSA? The answer is no. What are covered under competition expenses? Again, this will be contractual. Uh, is, it the responsibility, is the responsibility of the NSA confined to the physical well-being? The answer is no. It must cover emotional, psychological, even financial, and even insurance and uh, medical insurance. What is clean living? Of course, uh, <clears throat> we must follow the rules of uh, WADA, the Anti-Doping Authority, and this we will discuss uh, in our fourth uh, session. Personal performance gear, let's say like rubber shoes, uh, an athlete cannot be forced to wear a particular brand of shoes because that could affect his or her performance and therefore the right of the athlete must be respected. The right to consent, we've already discussed that. Our athletes are role models. They are must ambassadors of the sport and they must practice sports personship. The effectivity of the athlete's agreement under my template is one year, but of course it can be renewed. So what are the benefits under the law? Depending on the race, if it's Olympics, Asian Games or regional, depending on where you stand on the podium, whether gold, silver, or bronze, or whether you're able-bodied or para-athlete, as I earlier mentioned, para-athletes only get 50%. Then there's a uh, ladder of benefits of same benefits, but the amount is different depending on the competition and the medal. But again, uh, National Sports Association, our uh, patrons on the private sector <clears throat> can provide for additional financial benefits in terms of compensation, stipend, allowance, competition, travel, accommodation, training, and their personal gear. And again, it would be good, again, for National Sports Association to define these benefits and the amount uh, in their agreements with their national athletes. And our last slide for this morning uh, about national athletes will be for our para-athletes. We have this Magna Carta for disabled persons. Uh, Again, access to quality education. This is important. Uh, we have special education classes for our students or athletes with uh, disability. And this must be integrated in the formal education setup in public schools such as the SPED. Not just in, in, uh, in formal education, but in vocational or technical education. Sports and physical fitness programs must be designed for disabled persons. And section 40, which is actually uh, part of the 17th Sustainable Development Goal and the very essence of partnership, whether it's IOC, it's IPC, whether it's POC or Philspada would be, uh, and also a part of uh, the mandate of our agencies, whether at the national level, or the local government level would be partnerships. Here, under section 40 of RA 7277, national agencies and local government units may enter into joint ventures to provide for livelihood opportunities and, under, and other undertaking for our, including health, physical fitness, economic and social well-being of persons with disabilities. So that ends uh, the lecture on, uh, on module two, which discusses uh, uh, our national athletes and the games by which they could uh, participate in. Joash? Maraming maraming salamat po, Attorney Alberto Agria, for that very uh, informative and uh, very, very cohesive uh, modules. I hope Marami po natutunan ng ating participants here. We have been receiving reactions and questions already. Uh, simula pa lang po ng Module 1. Kaya hindi pa po, hindi na po natin yung patatagalin. I'm calling now ang ating pong moderator for this afternoon. It's Ms. Ayan Malyare. Good afternoon, Ms. Ayan. And uh, once we start our open forum, you are still uh, you, you can still send in po 
ang inyong uh, questions and reactions to any of our facilitator one and two. Ms. Arian, are you here? Yes. Okay, Joash. Thank you so much and thank you so much, Attorney Alberto Agra, for that very informative and uh, complete uh, module one and two. And uh, with that po, napakadami na po nating questions na na-receive from our participants today. So ngayon po, ang ating first question will be coming from Patafa, Arniel Ferreira. Attorney Al, your thoughts regarding the prices of the road running races where the female categories receive less compared to male categories. Thanks. Your thoughts, Attorney. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh... Again, my personal take is because I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer and advocate of equality. Uh, and I'm also part and helping women in sports in the Philippine Sports Commission. So I strongly encourage all our NSAs and even all our organizers to provide for equal entitlements and benefits to everybody. Um, siguro one question is, assuming hindi equal, are they violating any law? No. Uh, if it's uh, it's if it's a if it's a an event of a private entity, no. Uh, uh, so there are two views to that. One, you're violating the law uh, because it's unequal. The other option is it is a private undertaking, and therefore it depends on the organizer what will be the amount of the prizes. So there could be two views to that, no. But again. For me, I strongly advise everybody na sana pantay-pantay. Pantay-pantay, male and female and LGBTQ+. Plus, and sana pantay-pantay ang able-bodied able and para-athletes. Yes. Thank you, attorney. And next question is from John Stephen Ilo of the University of of the Philippines, Diliman. Hello, I would like to ask if and what sports government agencies under are the UAAP and NCAA? Yeah. Actually, they are independent private leagues. Um, however, the schools themselves are either regulated or supervised by either the, well, DepEd for public schools and CHED for higher education. But in terms of the rules, let's say, of UAAP and NCAA, uh, it is my thinking that there's no government agency which regulates them. Uh, hindi rin siya professional dahil na may authority ang Games and Amusement Board. But of course, like any other agency, like any other private league, they're governed by all laws on, uh, on commercial laws and civil laws, etc. No, So I don't think uh, there is an agency in government which can regulate or control uh, or dictate upon UAAP and, uh, and uh, NCAA. But again, we hope we will discuss this in greater detail next week. Kaya uh, bibitin, bibitinin ko muna kayo konti para magkita-kita tayo every Tuesday. Ayan. Okay, our next question from Mom Sarita Zafra of the Triathlon Association of the Philippines. May we request Attorney Al for a template of the athlete's agreement with the NSA for reference purposes. Thanks. Of course. Uh, I, yung template ko that for any NSA, it's, you may download it in my website. That's albertociagra.com. But if you want a copy of uh, the athlete's agreement which I signed with the athletes of the Pilipinas Obstacle Sports Federation, uh, maybe you can send a request and I can send that to you in your email, to, to your email address. But again, in my website, all my primers can be downloaded for free in albertociagra.com, including that template. Ayan. And kanina rin po, attorney, no, may nag ask din sa atin kung pwede rin daw po ba nalang gamitin po yun sa kanilang uh, presentation. Yes. In, uh, in fact, kung gusto nyo magkaroon ng forum for your NSA, forum for your athletes i'm i'm a text i'm a viber away uh, we, we can just schedule it and talk about in fact that's what i want that's part of my mission uh tayo ng mas maraming forum about the athletes agreement so that dumami ang nsa's na merong agreement with their athletes 
Yon. Pwede, pwede pala. Pwede so, pwede. yes. Our next question from MTC Ardell Carcelar. Good day. I have a question. In the classes of athlete, it was mentioned that one of the class is sex-oriented. My question is, what do you think of a trans woman, man turned to woman by surgery, participating in an all-women sports? Is that allowable or should be prohibited? For follow-up question, in case it is prohibited, isn't, isn't it a gender-based discrimination? Since I'm a firm believer in uh, the rights, equal rights of LGBT, no, uh, there shouldn't be any form of discrimination. Pero uh, ang mangyayari dito, each international federation, baka iba't iba ang kanilang pamantayan or rules governing transgender. No? So for a particular sport or for, for a particular event, ang kailangan ma-check ma would be what are the rules of that IF and that NSA insofar as uh, uh, participation of transgender athletes uh, are concerned. By the way, we will be discussing that uh, on the fourth Tuesday. That will be uh, a module seven of our uh, eight modules. So talagang kailangan kompletuhin ng ating mga participants itong module dahil uh, the rest ng itong mga question nila dun pa madidiscuss. The, uh, attorney. Correct. Also, yeah. next question from DepEd SDO Bulacan, Richard Reyes. What is your reaction about the disband of Department of Education, Culture, and Sports? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, one, it's it's right now that's the current setup. Uh, Dati DEX, ngayon DepEd. So, uh, so that's a policy determination by the members of Congress. Uh, but for me, uh, napakahalaga ng sports para sa lahat. And therefore, I think all government agencies may has. Kaya nga kanina, pinakita ko yung decentralization in sports. Uh, ang DepEd merong mandate ng sports, ang CHED meron, ang PSC meron, ang GAB meron, local government units meron. Um, ang challenge for this would be uh, closer coordination and integration of programs. So, may kanya-kanyang mandate sa kasalukuyan. No? I wouldn't want to pass judgment whether that law is right or wrong. Okay. Authority, next question from Wrestling Association of the Philippines, Joaquin Antonio Marte. Attorney Agra mentioned equality. What is his take on transgender athletes competing in sex-specific sports? Uh, I think I answered that uh, already. Uh, I mean, malalim paniniwala ako. No? By the way, um, hindi ganito ang paniniwala. Sorry, counting personal sharing. No? Hindi ganito ang paniniwala ako nung ako'y bata-bata. No? Um, and uh, I'm also, hanggang ngayon, tuloy-tuloy ang aking learning process and maturing process. Kaya nga, tuloy-tuloy din yung ganito mga forum kasi I'd like to hopefully expand the orientation of everybody because because of my own continuing education process, uh, lumawak din at lumalim ang aking kaalaman. So again, the reason why we're doing this forum is learning, unlearning, relearning. No? Yes. And hopefully sa mga medyo hindi ganong kaprogresibo at liberal, hopefully the sports course will broaden your horizon perspective regarding women and regarding LGBTQ+. Yes. Next question from Western Philippine University, Ferdinand Gelbolingo. Is there any qualification that will dictate or can be a basis for attaining a directorship of sports? What if the director is now qualified for it? How it will be dealt? Thank you. Yeah. Um, sorry, director, where? Kasi, uh, again, bawat institution, whether public or private, may kanya-kanya silang structure uh, director if it's for government then we have to follow civil, civil service commission rules if it's a private sector then they have to follow their own and of course uh, labor laws so uh, directorship in government uh, whether schools or or in any other government agency uh, is it typically it's career and uh, again we have to follow uh, civil service laws. 
Yes. Ito, attorney from Biscas Junlen Arguez. Is there a law regarding standardization of salaries to those local coaches in the Philippines? Okay. Ang tanong, unang tanong, ang coaches ba ay empleyado? Uh, kasi kung sila ay empleyado, then we, we must follow the labor code. And under the labor code, may minimum wage. Pero well, uh, for as long as you comply with the minimum wage, then wala kang nilalabag na batas. Ang tanong ay, iba't iba naman ang pasweldo sa mga empleyado bawat kumpanya. Eh. Although may industry practice, uh, itong industry practice is not mandated for as long as you do not violate the minimum wage law. No? So maraming katanungan, ano? empleyado ka ba or hindi? independent contractor ka ba or hindi no uh, what i answered lang for this morning is ang national athletes ay hindi empleyado they are beneficiaries so interesting discussion would be ang coaches ba ay uh, empleyado or beneficiary din so uh, ang tabayanan sa next session <laughs> Yes. Ito, uh, attorney from Professor Benjamin Uy, can national athletes choose their own coaches and their own training methods like when, where, and how to train? In my template agreement, uh, athletes must be consulted in the drawing up of their training plan. And again, typically, ang masusunod talaga sa coaching and training would be the coaches. But there are certain instances, and normally, again, borderline issue to, uh, if an athlete feels na yung training regimen is not appropriate, if an athlete feels na nakakasama sa kanya yung training regimen, if an athlete feels na yung, let's say, supplements na pinaprescribe ay hindi nakakatulong, no? ako, uh, ang paniniwala ko may right to consent yung atleta. Pero sa, ang point ko dito sana, pwedeng iwasan yung ganung mangyayari. Eh. Through discussion, through, through constructive criticism. No? But uh, again, mahalaga na linawin ito in the athlete's agreement. Kasi uh, kung walang agreement between the NSA, between the coaches and the athletes, uh, this, answer, this question will not be answered. Uh, and the answer to that question it can be case to case. So, uh, ang hirap, no? Uh, of course, the coaches are there para maging, para mag-gold medal si athlete. No? Pero meron din kalayaan si atleta in terms of, you know? So, again, uh, mahirap itong balancing act. No? Yes. Another question from Philippine Standard Insurance, Stephen Tan. If national athletes are beneficiaries, are the coaches considered service providers? Uh, I'm uh, okay. For me, that's for further study. Uh, one of my primers will be devoted to coaches. Uh, ayoko munang mga has in terms of answering that. Uh, maybe my next primer or my next next primer will be about coaches' rights and responsibilities. Uh, kasi hindi lang naman rights of athletes and responsibilities. Coaches then and officials. So, uh, ang tabayanan yung primer na yon on coaches. Okay, and dami pa nating questions dito, attorney. Isa-isain lang po natin. This one, from Ricardo IV, Bong Hanoi. Is there a law or organization both national or international encompasses indigenous people's rights for sports in Sports for All? Uh, clearly, if you recall yung ating definition of sports, kasama ang indigenous games. And marami ring, quote-unquote, regular or traditional sports na merong indigenous components. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure, and I might be mistaken, uh, I'm not sure if there is like an IOC or an IPC for indigenous sports. No? So... Again, meron din tayong Magna Carta for Indigenous Peoples. And uh, let me try to tackle their rights as well in our future modules. Ayun. At to sir from Bulacan State University, Gerald Santos. 
I just want to ask po if there's a law of benefits about the student athletes who represent our country in international games. Iba po ba ito sa benefits na nakukuha ng professional athletes? Actually, if you're a student athlete, then you participated, let's say, in the SEA Games or in the Olympics, let's say, then you will get the benefits under uh, the National Athletes Incentives Act and Coaches Act. So not because you're an athlete, but because uh, you participated in that event and because you landed in the podium. No? So a professional athletes, uh, iba yon. Uh, again, depending on the International Federation, whether professional athletes can play in amateur games. Uh, like for tennis now, so Olympics, uh, whether professional or amateur, pwede. Pero it all depends also in, on the International Federation. Yes. Attorney, another question from Joaquin Antonio Marte of WAP. Is there a specific law covering minor athletes, juniors, national teams, and do they receive the same benefits as senior athletes? Uh, ang sakit pakinggan yung senior, ano? So, uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, I mean, whether you're minor, of course, you need certain consents, no? especially from the parents or the guardian. But if you're a minor, then uh, then nagkaroon ka ng, ng, ng gold medal. For example, uh, uh, si, no, si Ayala, our, uh, our tennis uh uh, junior tennis player who's now competing in Wimbledon, she will be representing. I, I don't know if she if she will compete, let's say, in the Southeast Asian Games, and she brings home the gold. So kahit minor siya, uh, makukuha niya yung prize incentive under the law. Uh, again, not because she's a minor, but because. Uh, she participated in the SEA Games and brought home the gold. Yes. Another question um, from Coach Jojo Posadas. Ano pong reaction nyo regarding sa salary ng foreign coach compared sa national coach natin? Uh, I suppose ang point niya is mas, mas mataas kasi ang sahod ng foreign coach compared to local coaches. Again, if it's um, is there a law being violated dahil iba ang kanilang sweldo? Uh, again, there, we, in our labor laws, di ba, kailangan for foreign coaches uh, or even for foreign nationals, pwede ka lang matap kung walang local counterpart that can, can do the job. And two, our foreign yung mga expats, kailangan may technology transfer for local coaches. And again, we have a lot of foreign players and foreign coaches na naturalized na uh, here in the Philippines and therefore hindi na sila technically foreign. So um, I'd like to think na the reason why others get higher salaries than others because of expertise and experience. And hopefully at some point, uh, we will exceed the expert, the expertise and experience of foreign nationals. So, uh, so that should not be a permanent thing. Okay, last question, attorney. Before I turn over to Joash, from um, Dean Kiko Diaz of the University of the Philippines. Yeah, can the executive branch of government, in this case PSE, take lead? So amendments in RA 10699 can be pushed more aggressively. The answer is yes. Uh, <clears throat> actually, lobbying must be a concerted effort. Um, and part of the mandate of all government agencies is to propose amendments to existing laws. So I think for me, ang, kung magandang ilabi yung parity of benefits between able-bodied athletes and para athletes. I think there's a pending bill now. Uh, hof uh, hopefully that will become a law. Uh, pero right now, uh, to my mind, there's discrimination. You know? uh, actually, yung iba nga, nag-iisip, what if file natin ang kaso yung 
questioning the constitutionality of that law. Uh, actually, that's another option in terms of all remedies. No? One, change the law. Two, question the law. If you feel it violates the constitution, such as the rule on equality, then uh, it depends on the Supreme Court whether they will want to take cognizance of that case and whether rule in, whether one and two, whether they will rule in favor of the petitioner. But again, ako, um, I'm a firm believer that dapat pantay pantay. Yes. Thank you, Attorney Agra, and back to you, Joash. Thank you. There you have it. Uh, that concludes our uh, open forum for this uh, for this session. Uh, maraming maraming salamat Ms. Aaron Maliari and at our uh, resource speaker, Tony Agra.